Hello everyone, GG1 Barton here with another video, this time in Battle of Stalingrad. I'm going to update my opinions on this game since it, it has been a while since I've played it and they've done a lot to it. I used to complain a lot and criticize 1C and Triple Seven about their job of uh, flight modeling. And the flight models in this game were atrocious. And I likened it to going to a steakhouse or a nice fancy steak restaurant and not having a good steak. And you got good drinks, it's a nice atmosphere, this game's always been beautiful. But when it comes down to it, when you want a flight model, or you want a, a flight sim, you want something that simulates flying accurately. And this one just never really did, at least for me. The 109 was always too shaky and too unstable, and it was a really an, an off-putting characteristic of the game, and I was really doubtful about its future, but I must say that those doubts have been... Well, those criticisms have been heard and answered, and these planes fly a lot more like they should. I'm flying the BF-109 F2 right now, just in a quick mission, and... It flies a lot more stable than it was before. It's still got some quirks. I think in a stall, the elevator and rudder are still a little bit too authoritative. I don't think they lose the effectiveness like they should. But the aircraft is more stable than rolling. It used to be if you rolled the aircraft, the nose would just swing around like this for days, it seemed. It was ridiculous trying to take aim on someone during a rolling scissors or, you know, quick rolling maneuvers was very difficult. And they have fixed that. And the rudder authority, now I can slam on the rudder and it won't stall it. It used to be, I know that I've tested it all the way up to 350 kilometers an hour, that I used to be able to slam on one of the rudders and it would actually snap roll the aircraft because it would yaw so much, which was completely inaccurate. But they've they fixed that, and they fixed the other 109s, and the game is just, it's really, really fun. If you've been away because of the flight models, I would highly encourage you to come back. Try it again. I'm going to say that there's going to be a place for this game on my computer from here on out, period. The on-again, off-again relationship that I've had with this game is over. It's, uh, I do think that this has a very good chance of being, I think this will be, successor to IL-2-1946, and Rise of Flight even is being incorporated into this game under the banner of uh, the Flying Circus. If you haven't noticed that in the forums, I'd go take a look at that. They're going to import World War I theater into this game. So Rise of Flight, as a standalone game, is dead, officially, but it will be the genre will be breathed new life in in this one, and I'm looking forward to that, especially having both of those games under one roof, I think will make it a little bit easier. It'll make it a lot better. And I can't wait to see what the aircraft look like and fly like in this game, because I think the damage modeling in this game is a little bit more complex, or it can be more complex. I really can't wait for the World War One theater to, or World War One war to come out in this game. I'm really looking forward to that. And tanks, they're doing tanks as well, so I'm looking forward to that too. I think this game's going to be bigger than IL-2-1946. Obviously, I mean, you've got World War One. there were uh, add-ons and stuff like that for IL-2-1946, so you could get World War One planes, but... And I'm pretty sure there may have been some mod mods that you could put in IL-2-1946 for tanks and that kind of stuff. I know in Cliffs of Dover you can drive tanks and shoot guns and stuff like that, but I think it's going to be a lot more in-depth in Battle of Stalingrad, or in this series. I wonder what they're going... Is it just going to be IL-2 Stormovic 
there's something that they're going to have to fix or figure out because you've got Cliffs of Dover and what's going to end up their Team Fusion expansion pack, but then you've effectively got two games under the same banner while two Sturmovic at the same time. And this can't be Battle of Stalingrad all the way up until, you know, the end of the war when when they've simulated effectively, you know, 80 plus percent of the war. You can't just call this Battle of Stalingrad. So I wonder how they're going to, you know, finalize that. We always need an L2-1946 by its final version, but... I mean, even before then, it was just kind of ILT-1946, but then I guess it was the first version, so who knows. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're doing good. That's all I can say, and I needed to say that, that, you know, I can't expect to be taken seriously when I criticize these guys and not give them praise when they deserve it, because these guys have come a long ways when it comes to this game. It's taken a little bit longer than I hoped it would, but they got it right. And so, if you've been away, I would encourage you to come back, and I hope to see everyone in the skies, hopefully in my gun sight. <laughs> I will be coming out with more videos, a couple of montages in the pipe, uh, more tutorials and stuff like that. So look forward to those. If you've stuck around and subscribed, and you're a subscriber to my channel, and you've stuck around through my absenteeism and my break racing sims then thanks for still being here your patience will be rewarded if you're not a subscriber I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button for new future content if you like this video and you've stuck around this long uh, go ahead and drop a like on it I will catch you guys later